It's tax season here in Spain, everyone's favourite time of the year. Not. The Spanish tax declaration, also known as the Declaración de la Renta, is, let's be honest, quite scary and quite daunting. Even myself, up to this year, I really struggled to understand how this worked and particularly with last year having been um, a complicated year for me, having sold investments, buying a property, I was really worried about what this year was going to look like. However, I've now completed my declaration and having looked through line after line after line, I feel like I'm at a stage where I can give some kind of insight and explanation as to how it actually works to you guys. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what the Declaración de la Renta is, how it works, who has to fill it out, I'm going to go into a bit of detail about some of the different sections in there, and also I'm going to tell you a bit about one of the services I used to present my declaration this year. So let's get into the video. So quick disclaimer before we start today's video, I'm not a tax professional and I would strongly recommend seeking professional advice uh, from a tax advisor, from a qualified tax advisor, so you can get the help you need to help you complete your Declaración de la Renta. Uh, that's out of the way, let's get right into the content. So what is the Declaración de la Renta? So once a year in Spain, you'll present your annual tax return and this is the Declaración de la Renta. And it's a particular form that comes from the tax authority known as the Modelo Cien. And how does this work? It essentially looks at the tax you've paid for the previous year. So you'll always complete the declaration uh, for the previous year. So for example, this year in 2022, we're completing the tax returns for 2021. And essentially based on any income you've had, any investments, all that kind of stuff, and based on the tax that you paid last year, it will calculate if there's any additional tax owed or if you're owed a tax refund. For those of you that aren't aware, payroll tax is deducted automatically from your pay slip if you work for an employer in Spain. And then if you're an autonomo, you will declare your taxes on a quarterly basis and that will tell you if you need to pay or if you don't have to pay as a result of your, uh, your income as an autonomo. So who does and who doesn't have to present a declaración de la renta to the tax authorities each year? Well, if you fall in the following group, then you will have to present the Declaración de la Renta to the tax authorities. So if your gross annual income is over 22,000 euros, or if your gross annual income is between 14,000 euros and 22,000 euros, but you've had more than one employee or person that pays you, if you've had uh, capital gains at any point through the year, and if you've had at least 1,000 euros in rental income from properties. So who does that leave? So that leaves people who've had one employer or one person paying them and they've earned less than 22,000 euros in the year, or if you've had multiple employers or payers and you've earned less than 14,000 euros in the year, if you've had less than 1,000 euros of capital gains, or losses, capital losses of greater than 500 euros in the tax year. If you fall into that group, then you are exempt from doing the Declaración de la Renta. Something I forgot to mention while I was recording were the key dates around presenting the tax declaration. So typically from the beginning of April of each year is when you can begin to consult what's known as your borrador, so your draft tax declaration on the Agencia Tributaria website. Or if you prefer to present your declaration in person with the help of the tax authorities, then you can begin to do that from May. And in both cases, you need to have submitted your tax return to the tax authorities by no later than the end of June. So now that we know what the Declaración de la Renta is, who has to do it and what the timelines are for doing it, let's have a look through some of the key sections that you may be required to fill in in your tax declaration. So the very first page of the Declaración de la Renta will be for your personal information. It will consist of your name, your DNI if you're Spanish or your NIE if you're not Spanish, your autonomous community of residence, because remember the autonomous community that you live in will determine your tax rates and also whether you're filing an individual or joint tax return. So you can file individually or if you're married, then you can also file a joint tax return. It's up to you. Then we get into the numbers section of the declaration. So the first part that you'll see is your earned income. Now this will for most people come from an employer. And as the Agencia Tributaria, so the Spanish tax agency, will generally have a record of what you've been paid. If you go onto the website, you can check out your draft and they will automatically populate that with the information they have 
from your employer. So any earned income from your employment will go in here. Also, if you receive a pension or if you've received any grants or allowances throughout the year, this will also go in this section as well. If you're an autonomous, then your income will be declared a little bit later in the declaration. So we will get around to that. But do keep in mind that if you are in a situation of pluriactividad, that's to say that you're employed and you are registered as an autonomo, then you will have to declare um, and complete both sections. So once you've filled out all your income, what this creates is the taxable income or the base imponible as it's known in Spanish. And this is the part of your income, your earned income that you will be taxed on. And we'll see how that works again a little bit later down the declaration. Now, the next two sections of the declaration are called rendimientos de capital mobiliario and bienes inmuebles. So the first one covers any passive income that you have essentially. So if you have earned interest in a bank account or in a uh, kind of a deposit that you have, or if you've been paid a dividend by any companies that you have, then that will go in this section. And then in the next section, bienes inmuebles, this is for any property that you own. So if you own any property, you will include it there in the declaration as well. And this is also where you'll declare any rental income that you've had from those properties as well. And you'll also be able to deduct any uh, expenses related to the running of that property as well in this section. The next section is for autonomous, and this is where you'll declare your operational income and expenses from your activity. If you have more than one activity, then you'll declare it by activity type as well. So each activity has a code, and if you are registered as an autonomous, I'm sure you'll know what the relevant codes are for your activity. This will then give you your net profit or net loss as an autonomo, which you'll see later on will be included in the base imponible from rendimientos de trabajo. Following on, we have ganancias y pérdidas patrimoniales. Now these are capital gains and losses. So if you had stocks, funds, ETFs, crypto now as well, as this has to be declared, then you'll need to include it in this section. So only if you sold as well, only if you sold in the previous tax year for the year that you're completing the declaration, will you need to declare it in the in the Declaración de la Renta. And the key things to include here are a brief description of the asset that you sold. For example, if I had the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, then I would put a brief description there, Vanguard S&P 500, for example. I'd put in the value at which I bought it at. So this is important. So the price at which I bought multiplied by the number of shares I bought. And then I would then include the price at which I sold it at multiplied by the number of shares I sold as well as this is what's going to give you your gain or your loss. And then you do that for each stock, each fund, each ETF. And then at the bottom of the section, you'll see what your total gain was and your total loss was. And what this will create are essentially the taxable gains. So the base imponible de ahorro, as it's known in Spanish. So this will take the net result of your gains or losses and it will also incorporate from the previous section your capital mobiliario, so any dividends, any interests. The reason for this is that investing income, so capital gains, dividends, interest, is taxed differently, that's to say at different rates, than earned income is. So the tax declaration, what it does is it separates the two of them out and calculates the respective taxes on each part. If you've had any other income as well that doesn't come from investing, but it also doesn't come from your employer, then this will need to be included in the declaration as well. And that will form part of the taxable base that your earned income comes into. So now that we've got to the bottom of all those sections, we now have all the components that give us the base imponible general, so the general taxable income, and also the base imponible de ahorro, so the taxable uh, investment income. And then what you'll see is the earned income that you'll be taxed on, and then the capital gains and losses that you'll be taxed uh, on or compensated for in the case that you've made a loss. But just before we get to the result of the renta, there is one more section which is good to go through, and this is the deductions section. Yes, there are some fiscal incentives in Spain. And what these fiscal incentives will allow you to do is essentially reduce your tax baselines further. So I'll not go through the entire list, but just to give you a couple of examples, as I've talked about on the channel before, if you contribute to a Spanish plan de pensiones, then whatever you've contributed and what your employers contributed in a year, 
that can be used to reduce the base imponible general, so your earned income. If you've given money to a registered charity in Spain, then you can use some of this to reduce your tax baseline as well. If you're a familia numerosa, so you have a large family, that can also give you some deductions in La Renta. And maybe one final example, so the Comunidad de Madrid is actually giving out incentives for young people to uh, launch entrepreneurship projects. So they will give you um, a certain deduction in the Declaración de la Renta as well for that. And so now we've gotten to the end of the Declaración de la Renta. So what we have now is our taxable earned income reduced with all the deductions and the same for our investment income essentially. So we'll have any deductions now taken into account. So now we've got the two tax baselines and we can calculate our tax. What we essentially do to get the result of the tax declaration is compare the quota integral, which is any tax that you had paid and had been withheld on your paycheck or paid as an autonomo, etc and also the quota liquida, which is the actual calculation of tax that comes out in this declaration. So this is essentially the quota liquida, the real amount of tax that you should be paying. And essentially the difference between the quota integral, so what you've already paid, and the quota liquida is the result of your declaración de la renta. So to give you an example of what this might look like in practice, let's take two examples. So example number one is a person who lives in Madrid and earns 25,000 euros per year. Let's say they also made 500 euros in capital gains and they paid 2,000 euros into a plan de pensiones. So based on what they earned, they will have been taxed about five and a half thousand euros. However, this tax will have been taken directly from their payroll and won't take into account the fact that they've paid into a plan de pensiones, nor the fact that they've made capital gains. So that's essentially what we've done here in the Declaración de la Renta. So if we take this person's data, that gets us back to an actual tax figure of what they need to pay of five thousand euros. So the result of the Declaración de la Renta for this person would be minus four hundred meaning the tax authorities owe this person money. Now let's take another example. Let's say again that a person earns 25,000 euros in the Comunidad de Madrid, but this time instead of having someone who pays into a plan de pensiones, let's say they don't pay into a plan de pensiones, but they have 2,000 euros of income as an autonomo, for example, and we'll keep the example of the 500 euros of capital gains. So again, with this person, it will have paid the same amount. They will have paid about five and a half thousand euros in tax from their payroll. But now if we take into account the profit as an autonomo and also their capital gains, then their tax bill actually comes out at around 6,100 euros. So this person's result from the Declaración de la Renta would be about 600 euros and this would be owed to the tax agency. So this person would have to pay additional money to the tax authorities. Now in the declaration, you will give the bank account in which you want to be credited money or that the money will be debited from. And in some cases, the tax authority may ask for additional justification if you're owed a refund just to make sure that you know everything is as you have declared it to be which if it is then you have nothing to worry about and the timelines really depend it can be very quick or if they ask for additional information then it can be pushed further down the line so now what i want to talk about is how i filled out the declaración de la renta now there are a couple of ways to do this there is of course as i mentioned in the video there is the borrador the electronic form online um, that you can get from the agencia tributaria and it is pre-filled with your data, but this can be a bit tricky. And what I would strongly recommend actually is going through a tax advisor service, either going to a physical tax advisor who can help you. If you don't speak Spanish as well, then you may want to go to an English speaking tax advisor in Spain. Or if you feel a bit more comfortable and you have the data on your investments from last year, your autonomous income, and you wanna have a goal at doing it online, then there are various platforms out there that can help you doing that. Personally, this year I used a service called TaxDown. It is an official collaborator of the Agencia Tributaria. So what you can do on this platform is essentially fill out all your information of the stocks that you've sold, for example, any properties in your name. You can check your income details. And then they have various plans which will allow you to show your declaration to a tax advisor clear any doubts or queries that you have with them before it is presented. Personally, I had a very good experience with TaxDown. The advisor who helped me was very patient, very helpful, um, helped me resolve any doubts, very knowledgeable about the tax system as well. 
Um, and for me, it was definitely worth the money that I paid for it. And if you want to sign up to Tax Advisor, I will leave a, a link in the description to do so. And that will give you a little bit of money off your subscription as well. This is not a paid promotion, by the way, just to clarify that this is me just uh, recommending a service that I have personally used and I found very helpful in my situation. The platform is in Spanish as well, just to tell you up front. But if you have uh, a basic to intermediate knowledge of Spanish, then you should be able to navigate the platform without too much difficulty. And of course you have advisors who are available to help you with any doubts that you have. Hope you found this video helpful guys. And I hope you're feeling a little bit less stressed about the Declaración de la Renta. Leave a comment and let me know if this is your first time doing the declaration or if you have experience doing the Declaración de la Renta before. Now why not check out my other videos? And if you're not yet subscribed and you wanna see more content like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell so that you don't miss a single update. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.